Hey there, it's Joe Son of Disruptive. How are you? I just happened to turn the camera on. Um, this isn't posed at all. I wasn't uh, practicing this pose for seven minutes trying to look cool, or maybe I was. Why am I holding a guitar, you say? I think when you hold a guitar, you automatically look about 54% cooler than you would without a guitar. So why not? That's what I say. And also this is the follow-up video to the video where I had you try to guess who the guitar player was. Three people were correct in their answer and obviously those three people know they're correct. Not a guess. It's not a name anybody would just guess because um, you have to dig a little bit. It's not a top of the mind guitar player and that's the whole reason why I did the video. Guitar player was yes R L T or Ronnie Latecro Latecro. Um I've heard it pronounced both ways. Norwegian guitar player, the guitarist for the band TNT. TNT was a very um you know, it's a very generic sounding band name, but I always found the band themselves to be anything but generic. Um, and I'm not really honestly thinking that there's gonna be anybody out there who, let's say you came to my channel because you wanted to hear the Opeth reactions or something like that. I don't think there's gonna be a much crossover of people being like, oh yeah, TNT are good as well because they're very different, you know? It's a very different animal, or are they? Yeah, they are. They're actually really, really different, except for they're very talented musicians and are very good artists. And um, anyway, Ronnie, his name never gets brought up in these lists. Even if you see lists of kind of the top 80s shred guys, you know, you, you'll see a lot of um, Jakey e. Lee, Warren Demartini, George Lynch, obviously, and th those are all great guitar players, especially George Lynch is just a fantastic player, but I always felt that Ronnie was as good as any of them, and it was actually more unique than most of them, other than George Lynch who I also think is a very unique player. Um, Ronnie was very different sounding. He could do any of that stuff, but then he could do other things as well. Like, you'll hear a lot of classical influence in his playing, but you'll also hear a lot of Jimi Hendrix in his playing. He kind of melds kind of those two worlds together and does it very well. You also hear a lot of Brian May influence in there as well. It's unmistakable. And... Um, but the way he puts it together is very unique sounding and very much his own sound. He's got a very, I think, unique phrasing. And once you get used to it, it's, it's, there's some points where it's a little off-putting where you're like, what was that? And then it's like, oh yeah, that's, that's Ronnie. That's what he does. He he can be quirky at times. So TNT, if you don't know, they were semi-popular in the kind of mid-80s. They had a few songs that got onto MTV. And um, yeah, they were kind of your standard hair metal fare a little bit, but not quite. I remember being in high school and when I picked up the Intuition CD, um, nobody, nobody in my high school liked that CD. I played it for a few people and they were like, what is this? It was just different. It wasn't, you know, at that time people were still big into the hair metal where I lived. You know, I mean, there was a lot of Metallica and stuff like that as well, but people still loved, you know, their... Motley Crue's and all that stuff as well. But there was something different here. There was a more ma mature 
sound as well as more classical influences showing through just more European I suppose than they're used to and uh, like I said nobody liked it and there were people who liked some of the tell no tales thing a little bit um, so they, they, they just they were just a little different and uh, even up through their some of my favorite TNT material would have been I think in the 2000s Firefly um, I, love, I love that album and it is very odd it's it's different and it's it's quirky but there are some really good songs on it as well um, Transistor got a lot of flack I enjoyed that one my religion was a very good um, very good hard rock melodic hard rock album and uh, they're still making music today and I just wanted to give him a shout out talk about him for a while because I think he's just a killer player he was also in a band called Vagabond they made two records their first record was incredible I thought very underrated it is one of those underrated gems if you can find it um, I think it's just uh, Vagabond Vagabond I think I think it was self-titled if I am correct I think I am really great one the second one a big fan of life had some decent stuff on it. I wasn't as big of a fan of that record he also has three solo records and I'm not gonna lie they're odd they're 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 out there a bit his first one was I think it was that was back in the 90s um, extra strong string I believe it was had some cool stuff on it and then just recently within the last 10 years he's released a couple and they they're 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 different they are um, very uh, maybe not what you'd expect if you know TNT at all anyway that's all um, I'm just going to answer the question of who that guitar player was and talk about him for a little bit um, I ran out of things to say I guess I'll try to do this once in a while I think it's fun although I think it's gonna be difficult I think it's gonna be difficult not to uh, have a bunch of people get the right answer this was one that I thought was going to be difficult um, I have a few other ideas that I'm going to do and we'll see but I think this may be the hardest one because rarely is there going to be somebody so good who's been around for so long be so unknown anyway there you go Ronnie Letecaro is a killer guitar player enough said thank you for watching see you